see here, I'm out here mapping a, uh, this is a marsh creation area. It's pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we're gonna take a, uh, we gotta take a gator tail to even get out here through all these, uh, mud flats. Um, we're flying a mission. It's about a thousand acre site right now. See, this is kind of my, uh, my setup here. I'm flying an Octavian Nova. It's a fixed wing aircraft. We're actually cruising at about 29 meters per second with a ground speed about 18 meters per second. So we have a little bit of a, a tailwind on there. Um, you can see here as a flight, flight plan is the aircraft in, in the sky. Um, the power laptop, the laptop you can get about two or three hours out of. This is a Dell uh, Toughbook. Um, I have a 12 volt battery. This allows me to, it gives me another, about another two hours or so to the twin inverter. Um, it's light. Um, you know, I've brought car batteries out before, but they get really heavy. We tried to pack it really light coming out here because we did have to take a boat and then hike in to this area here, about a half a mile. Um, equipment's got binoculars or sunglasses. This is the radio control, just your standard uh, RC radio. I've also got an aircraft radio just because um, this area here is there's two flight schools out of New Orleans that, uh, that fly over this area and do maneuvers with students. Um, I just like to have a radio on hand just so I can hear in case uh, they're coming in the area. Typically I can hear them leaving, uh, leaving the uh, Lakefront Air, Airport airspace um, and then coming into, uh, coming into the New Orleans International or Armstrong International Airport. So uh, they typically don't get below 500 feet, but you know, just in case somebody's altimeter or, or uh, barometer hasn't been set correctly, um, you know, I just like to monitor traffic at all times and watch what they do. Most of the time they're out here doing slow flights, steep turns. It's kind of interesting to uh, to watch them out here. You can hear it's coming into a headwind. I've actually got a uh, got a ground speed of about nine meters per second. I've got an airspeed about 17 meters per second. So it's just uh, just actually right above me right now. Just parked in the sky almost. Let's see if we can get a get, a bit, get a focus here. Aircraft. It's got about a nine and a half meter wingspan. Uh, it'll fly for about an hour and a half. That's how I'm able to do a thousand acres. It's actually got a DSRL. Uh, SLR. Uh, the filter has been, uh, the near infrared, infrared filter has been removed. Um, and then I can put a uh, put filters on it to uh, filter out different wavelengths. Right now, we're going to do uh, doing what I call a pseudo near infrared, and then we'll be able to do it in EDI. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my setup. That's uh, it's how you can see you're going into the turn. Um, you can see it come and pick up a tailwind. I mean, typically I'd want to fly this with a crosswind, but um, just based on location where we are and to maintain line of sight, um, I couldn't fly. I couldn't fly it with a crosswind, so I'm just kind of taking a taking a gamble here, and hopefully the um, the imagery will come out pretty good. And it should. So. Back to about to land here probably in a minute. Let's see here, where'd she go? Okay, so that's my setup. 